Hello, and welcome back to the First Star National STEAM Academy. We are so excited to have you here today with a speaker that we know you're gonna love. Today, we are joined by Dr. Morgan Mitchell, who is a biochemist, we'll get into what that means, and an associate product manager at SciX. But as we know well, being grounded at the intersection of technology and social justice, people are so much more than their job titles. Dr. Mitchell, welcome to the STEAM Academy. Why don't you tell us a bit about who you are and what you do in your own words? Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I have a PhD in biochemistry. Um, and what that means is biochemistry is essentially looking at uh, the chemical processes um, involved in relating to living organisms. And so I go into depth with that. Um, my research was focused on uh, proteins involved in tuberculosis. And now, as you stated, I'm on the industrial side of, of uh, science. And I am now product manager for um, a life sciences uh, company. And I basically uh, manage the entire life cycle of a product starting from what does the customer need, uh, we create an idea based on that. Um, we look at our business objectives and how we can profit from that while also helping out our customer and getting customer feedback on those products. And so um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. But we have to throw it all the way back because we skip straight to the good stuff. Where are you from? I'm from Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. Is that the home of the one and only Beyonce? It is. <laughs> Beyonce, Lizzo, Megan Thee Stallion. Yes. Very nice. Very yes, nice. All yes, sorts yes. of wonderful Black women. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you're yes. on that list as well. Oh, so, thank you. <laughs> so before we get into kind of like the nitty gritty, I feel like you spend so much time in your introduction. So I want to go back. When you said my research, that was your doctoral research, correct? Yes. So tell me a little bit about how you got into a doctoral program in biochemistry, because I assume maybe you were good at math and science growing up, but why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so definitely um, I've always had an interest in science from the first grade. Um, I love science class. I love doing experiments. Um, I love dissecting animals. Um, I, I, I just loved it. I had a natural knack for it. Um, and um, I, I just pursued that passion um, all through high school. Um, in college, I actually was a biology major and I was on the path to uh, going into medical school to become a medical doctor. That's what I thought I wanted to do. Um, and in college, I realized that I, um, I could relate more to chemistry. And so I changed my major to chemistry. Um, it's more mathematical based. Um, and that, that just fit my, my personality, my natural intelligence. And I, you know, I could, I could relate to it. So I just gravitated towards it. Um, and I was still on track to becoming a medical doctor. I was studying for my MCATs and applying to medical, medical school. Um, and it wasn't until after I had already applied and gotten, uh, waitlisted, um, when I went into, um, getting my master's, um, and I actually, found a, a love of research. Um, and my professors um, in graduate school, um, they sort of um, ushered that passion and encouraged that passion. They saw that in me. And um, when I was doing research, I thought, you know, like, this is pretty cool. I really, really love this, but I still don't know if I want to do a PhD. Um, 
that that wasn't really on my radar. Um, and um, the University of Houston actually has a program where you can sort of do like a trial semester. Um, and so I said, well, I'll apply. I'll do a trial semester and then see how it goes after that. I did that and I, I ended up loving it. Um, and um, that that's how I got uh, my Ph.D. And um, that's that, that's how that's how it came about. So um, it is really interesting because, um, you know, medical school is always on the radar for people who are interested in science. Right. I mean. Um, the natural tendency is, oh, you should be a doctor, you should be a nurse. Um, but science has so many different paths. And, um, you know, whichever category or area that you um, are naturally inclinated towards or you naturally have a knack for, there's some sort of path that you can take and there's some sort of uh, profession that can be involved with that. And so, as you can see, I, I didn't even get into, uh, you know, my career path until late, you know, it changed. I, I loved uh, science, so I thought I was gonna be a doctor. You know, I thought I was gonna major in biology, switch to chemistry then, you know, just ended up falling into a PhD program. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I really enjoyed it. And um, yeah. Amazing. So you once again covered a lot of ground. You're just knocking my questions out and I love it. It gives us so much more time to talk about some other things. So what is your favorite thing in general? Because you work in industry now, but you obviously been in school a long time to get that PhD. So across all of these different experiences, what is your favorite thing about being a scientist? My favorite thing is um, the constant progression of science. It never ends. It's constantly evolving. Um, I'm still learning. Um, if you talk to any scientist, you know, they'll tell you um, it's exciting because there's always a new discovery. Um, there's always um, new technology. Um, we're always learning about how something works. Um, and it, it's just um, uh, very exciting. Amazing, amazing. And that excitement, I assume that general enthusiasm for science is probably what carried you from academia and academic research like you were doing when you got your PhD into this role that you have now as a product manager. For I think you did a pretty good job of breaking down what product management is. But can you tell us a little bit about what it is uh, to live a day in your life as a product manager? So product management is um, it's really interesting because it features so many categories. Um, it involves uh, customer insights. So like I mentioned, getting feedback from customers about the products. It involves pricing. It involves software. What type of software is involved um, with the product? Um, it involves um, accessories, what type of accessories uh, come with the product. Um, and, and so there's all these different um, um, segments that you have to look at. And, um, you know, as a product manager, um, you have to create a team that's involved with all of these segments in order to um, give that product a life. Um, and so, um, essentially what I'm doing right now is um, I'm on the consumer facing side of software. So I'm interacting and discussing uh, with consumers what they think about our software. Um, what are some of their difficulties? Um, what is our um, uh, technological uh, interface look like? Um, how can we make it more user-friendly? Um, 
uh, what features do they want to see in our product? Um, so it's it, it's really interesting. Um, it's definitely a shift um, from academia, from the lab, from from um, being a, a wet chemist and you know doing experiments on the bench um, to now on the commercial and, and business side of things. And um, so it's, it's, it's really interesting. I would say product management is for scientists who um, enjoy doing different things on a daily basis. We, we're always doing something different. We don't know what we may be doing tomorrow. Um, and um, so it's, it's, it's really exciting and you're able to really incorporate kind of um, a social aspect to it um, um, in uh, interactive aspect to it because you're not just by yourself in the lab doing experiments. You're working with, you know, your coworkers, you're working collaboratively with other teams. You know, you're talking to consumers and then you're taking that information back to your boss who is going to try and run some numbers and see, OK, how can our company make a profit um, from this uh, particular product? So um, it's really interesting. Awesome. And I think you bring up a really good point, which is that a lot of youth, when they're thinking about uh, pathways in science or technology or really science and engineering and math, they're like, I don't necessarily see those people, those science people as my people. Um, so the point that you brought up that really resonated with me was your people can look a bunch of different ways. You can have this scientific ex ex scientific expertise and use it to exist in these different type of spaces uh, that you want to occupy. So that's amazing. So definitely, as you were transitioning uh, from your PhD and from this kind of one definition of what we really think of societally, when someone says I'm a scientist, we start picturing a lab, we picture a white coat, we picture maybe a mad scientist kind of vibe if you watch yeah. enough cartoons. Yeah. So when you were transitioning from that into the type of scientist that you wanted to be in the way that you wanted to use your science, did you have a mentor who guided you along that process? You know, that's really interesting. Um, I didn't necessarily have a mentor. I think um, uh, what you described um, was very much uh, what I picture scientists to look like and do. And I did that for a long time. I, I was the scientist with the white coat and, and the, and the uh, you know, lab goggles. Um, and it wasn't until... Um, the very end of my research, my doctoral research, um, where I just happened to see a flyer uh, for this course, it was called uh, Bioscience Entrepreneurship. And it was actually offered at another school here um, in Houston. And I thought, oh, this, this is really interesting. I'm gonna take this class um, and I ended up taking the class and falling in love with it because it was my first time seeing um, the sort of marriage between business and science. I had never encountered that before. Um, and I, I thought this is awesome. And the class talked about, you know, um, if you have an idea how to create a prototype, how to create a product, um, it talked about, um, angel investing and, and how to, um, you know, create proposals to get funding from investors for your product. Um, and um, the course brought in different um, uh, founders of, of these life science companies. And, and the founders were, they were medical doctors, they were scientists, they were mathematicians, they were nursing. And, and, and so I had never seen that before and I, it was life changing. And so um, once I took this course, I just started researching, um, you know, um, 
science and business? What what do those roles look like? I had never even heard of this. And um, there wasn't much information on it. Um, um, we've definitely come a long way. Um, and I, you know, after I took that course, I ended up taking another course um, and it was called Intro to Product Management. And I, I took it, I fell in love with that. And then um, once I graduated from my PhD, I um, just started looking for product management roles and um, applied. And uh, it, it was just um, a, a perfect fit for me. Amazing. Amazing. And how, I mean, how great that you were able to find that perfect fit because so many people are still searching for it day to day. Um, so you said that you didn't necessarily have a mentor when it came to this process of transitioning from one type of science to another. Who would you say has been your biggest influence along your scientific journey? Um. My biggest influence, I would say, would be my mom. Um, she always had a knack for math. Um, she was um, in uh, uh, economy major in school, um, and she noticed my my natural knack for science and and my natural passion for science. Um, from when I was a little girl, she just kind of ushered that passion. Um, and yeah, I mean, um, you know, she, she always enrolled me in, in science fairs and, um, she's, she was just always my biggest, um, supporter. And, um, so yeah, she, she had a, a, a really large, um, influence on, on my life and, and how I got to where I am now. Wow, that's amazing. That is amazing. So you've talked about science and business, and it's so funny because our, our previous speaker is actually a brain scientist, but he's gone full entrepreneurship in as far as his career goes. Um, so as you are, if you will, um, a foot in, foot out of like both worlds, what can you tell me about the type <laughs> and I want to phrase this question correctly so that we can have a, a bird's eye view and not get into the nitty gritty, right? Okay. But what can you tell me about what SciX does? Um, and from there, right, what advice would you give an aspiring scientist or someone who is currently maybe on that path in college studying science? What are the types of things that they should be looking to develop to get to a place where they're working for a company like like yours? OK, so first, Sciex is a life sciences company, and they actually uh, create, produce and manufacture um, a lot of the instruments and equipment that uh, laboratories used. And so it was pretty interesting for me because I, I was actually using this equipment um, in my in my uh, doctoral studies. And um, the second part of your question, um, what should you do um, in order to tell me the question again? <laughs> Yeah. So like what uh, we have high school students who engage with our tech talks. We also have a few college students. Right. So what are the types of skills that they should be looking to develop outside of becoming really good at science? Uh, and what are the types of maybe internships and things like that that would be helpful, you know, if they're looking at a career within a company? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. You know, just take your basics in college, your your basic um, scientific courses and really take a mental note of what you naturally um, inclinate towards. Um, some people really like physics and there's different types of careers in physics. Um, I really like chemistry. And so uh, that that's what I went towards. Um, definitely 
um, network um, at your school, talk to your professors, ask them um, um, advice, ask them. Um, a lot of times they have um, their own labs and they're looking for students to intern or to volunteer with them. Um, and, and just really uh, research, I mean, Google anything, you know, literally Google what is biochemistry, uh, Google um, what can I do if I love uh, chemistry, uh, you know, and, and science and, and look at different uh, roles, look at different um, um, potential um, uh, potential um, uh, professions that you can do. And you'll be really surprised what is out there because it's not necessarily what you would think in your mind. It's not necessarily what you've heard before. Um, of course, you've, you've heard of a medical doctor, a nurse, um, uh, a teacher, um, but when you actually do your research, I mean, there, there are so many different things you can do. You can be a writer. Um, you can be, you know, a product manager. You can, I mean, there's so many different ways you can go with it. And so just basically um, use all your resources um, to your utmost advantage. Amazing. Amazing advice. So, a part of a huge part of our academy and what makes us uh, the first, our National STEAM Academy, is this emphasis on social justice. So we are grounded in technology, led by social justice. And at its very core, a part of that is acknowledging that all of the professionals that we bring in are more than just their professional expertise. And so I'd like to talk about one thing that I know you've experienced and survived and also that you do some advocacy work around, and that is your breast cancer diagnosis. So, of course, I've read the blog, the story um, of how you found out that you had breast cancer, but do you mind sharing that with us? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's pretty interesting. I, I got diagnosed with breast cancer in August of 2020, and I had um, just finished um, submitting my dissertation for my PhD. And I, I just happened to uh, brush up against my breast, and I found a lump. Um, and um, once I found the lump, I... I kind of brushed it off because it, 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 it was a shock. I mean, it doesn't run in my family or anything. Um, I told my mom to feel it. She said, yeah, there's something there. Um, I, uh, made an appointment with my OBGYN and, um, she didn't think that it was breast cancer just because of my age. I was 34 at the time. And, um, I, you know, uh, I, I I wasn't expecting it, um, and so once I got the uh, biopsy results back, um, um, and they said it was breast cancer, I was I was in shock, really. Um, and this happened, you know, in the middle of the um, COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, so it was it was it was a lot of. Um, shock value there because I, I I was so excited to be finishing my PhD and starting my career. Um, and then COVID-19 and then breast cancer. So um, it was a lot of um, a, a lot of highs and lows, um, a lot of challenges there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And one thing that I saw in your story that I think is really important is that you shared that you had several Black doctors, uh, Black female doctors, along the process of being diagnosed and also like seeking treatment. Uh, can you explain to us like what that meant in terms of access and like comfort? Yeah, I think it, it's really important. Uh, uh, representation uh, does matter. Um, I, I've always had um, a black OBGYN and, um, you know, she she acted, you know, really fast. Um, uh, she said, 
you know, she didn't expect cancer, but she immediately sent it off to get biopsied. Um, she had a relationship, a personal and professional relationship with um, one of the top um, black women breast surgeons in the state. And she already had that relationship. So it was, it was just natural order. She said, this is who I'm going to send you to. Mm -hmm. um, she said herself that she has had three um, um, breast cysts within her, her um, lifetime. And this surgeon removed all of those cysts. And um, she um, comforted me and told me, you know, um, she won't leave you looking all cut up and stabbed. She she has a really um, um, uh, care, you know, uh, for the aesthetic um, a, a look of the breasts, uh, which is important as a woman. Um, and and the whole thing was, um, you know, it 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 was just in sync. Um, and I think. I was really fortunate because, again, my my OBGYN was a was already a black woman, and she already had that professional relationship with the breast surgeon. But um, you can imagine um, people who who don't have, um, you know, a black woman OBGYN, um, or people you know who who don't have access to to healthcare um, in general. Um, so I, I really think it's important that you have um, doctors who look like you advocate for you. Um, and um, that's something that we have to do better uh, with as a as a culture as black women. Um, just just making sure that those relationships are already in place. Um, it's, it's, it's just really important for our own health, um, for, for our community. Um, and and I, I was really fortunate to have um, those two black women doctors um, on my team, caring for me, advocating for me. Um, it, it made the process um, not easy, but I, I was comforted in knowing that they really cared about me. Yeah, and that's something people willing to advocate for you, people who you know genuinely care about you, is something that I hope <laughs> resounds with many of our first star youth who have a director, who have academy director, who is literally fighting for them day and night. Of course, it's within the context usually of education, uh, but advocacy is something that spans all the different parts of, of our lives. So I have to ask one more question, and that is knowing all that you know now, if you could go back and give your younger self just a gem, a nugget of advice, whether it is something in your personal experiences or something in your professional career, what would that be? Um, I would tell the younger me, um, it's okay to have a plan about your profession, um, but it's okay to deviate from that plan. It's okay to change from that plan. You don't necessarily have to have every step of, of, of your professional life um, planned out. Um, and, and, you know, we can see that that life takes its course. It has, um, you know, different uh, barriers, different highs, different lows. Um, and I, I would just tell myself to um, embrace that change. Don't be afraid of it. Um, and um, just really encourage my younger self to know that um, whatever you like, whatever you have a passion for, that's usually what you'll end up doing. Um, because, 
your passion is what fulfills you. Um, so at the end of the day, if, if you're doing something that you really don't like, um, you, you won't be doing that for very long. Um, yeah, as, <laughs> yeah, as you get older, um, happiness is key, is really, really key. Um, and you, yeah, you start to understand uh, about what you want in life and not about um, what looks good on a resume or what your parents want or, um, you know, what type of accolades, but happiness and passion is, is what will sustain you uh, through the course. Absolutely. That is amazing advice, not only to younger Dr. Mitchell, but also to just the rest of us. I have to say thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a pleasure to learn about biochemistry, product management, as well as your journey that has been parallel or I guess perpendicular <laughs> to that. All um, the way. <laughs> right. It's all, it's all weaved in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we end, I do have to say, if you loved this Tech Talk, if you'd like to check out any more that we have in the future, feel free to sign up at, steam at, at firststar.org backslash steam for updates, to find links to all of our Tech Talks, and connect with us on social media. We are at First Star Academies and at First Star Steam, and we'd love to connect with you. Until next time. This is the first our National Steam Academy. Wave bye, Dr. Mitchell. <laughs> bye.